Hi, this is Mrs. Killian, a third grade teacher at Lafayette, and today we're going to be working on comparing fractions using benchmark fractions. So yesterday, we used the following strategies to compare fractions. We colored in fraction bars, we were finding the fractions on number lines, and we were looking at numerators and denominators. Today, we're going to look at benchmark fractions. And before we go on, I want to make sure that we establish what I am talking about when I'm mentioning benchmark fractions. So throughout our comparisons, we'll be looking at whether the fraction that we're working with is closer to zero, is it closer to a half, or is it closer to a whole, or sometimes even bigger than a whole. And why would we use benchmarks? Well, they help you picture the fraction in your head, especially if you don't have a picture. So we're first going to start out with fractions that do have pictures. And we are going to sort the pictures with, are they between zero and a half? Are they equal to one half? Are they between one half and one whole? Are they equal to one whole? Or are they greater than one whole? So, the first one we're going to look at is 7 eighths. And I'm going to set it right here. And when I look at the picture for 7 eighths, I can see that it is almost filled in, but not completely. That would mean that it would be between a half, more than half of it is filled in, because a half would be 4, because 4 plus 4 is 8, so that tells me that the top should be a 4 if I wanted a half. And so 7 eighths is more than that, so it's between 1 half and 1 whole. Okay. Now the next one we're going to look at is 2 eighths. Okay. Well, I notice there's an awful lot of white space. It's not as full as this 7 eighths. And like I said, if it was a half, half of 8 is 4. Four, so the numerator would have to be 4 if it was equal to a half. And so this one is between 0 and a half. So we're thinking benchmark fractions. It's between 0 and a half closer to 0. Okay. Now the next one is going to be 3 sixths. Okay. I look at it and I notice that the same amount of yellow is colored in as the white. I also see that there's a 6 in the denominator, and if I was to take it and make it in half, I would have 3 plus 3 is 6. So 3 6 is equal to 1 half. Okay. Our next one is going to be 2 thirds. So 2 thirds, I see that on Got, it has quite a bit of yellow. It has almost all of it. I see that with the three, it's going to be hard to come up with a, a half that's exact. But if I think about it, I can think, well, one plus one is two. And so then I would need a little bit more. So I need one and a half up here to be equal to a half. So that's going to be here where it's one half to one whole. The next one we're going to do is a fourth. Oh, I see there's three that are not colored and only one that is colored. So that doesn't seem like it would go here. Half of four is two. So one is even smaller. So this one would be over here with zero to a half. Now I'm going to have three-thirds. Oh, well, when I look at this picture, I see a whole bunch of yellow. All of it is yellow, which means that three-thirds is equal to one whole. I also double-check myself, and I notice that the numerator and the denominator are the exact same, so that means they're equal to a whole. So the next one I'm going to look at is going to be one and a half. Now when I pull it over and I look at the picture, I see one whole box colored in, and then I see a second box that only has half of it colored in. And so I can see that it is 
greater than a whole. And the last one I'm going to look at is 6 fourths, which I can see a whole box is colored in. And then a second one has two more little boxes colored in. So I can see that this is also greater than a whole. Now in third grade, you're going to have pictures when you deal with fractions, but you need to start thinking about what happens if you get to a fraction and you don't have a picture. So we're going to just work through this with a number line. So we're going to look at the fraction 6 eighths. And we're going to think together and we're going to say, all right, so my numerator is 6, my denominator is 8. That means to get from 0 to a whole, I need 8 pieces. Okay, so if I have 6 pieces, well, that's not very close to 0. And if I, I, I want to go half, I would need half of 8, and I know that 4 plus 4 is 8, so 4 eighths is going to be a half. And then I have 6, though, so I'm going to put my little crown in between a half and a whole. Okay, so the next one. 4 tenths, same idea. I'm going to look at the denominator and I'm going to see to get from 0 to a whole, I need 10 pieces. Well, I have 4. So, decide is it close to 0? Well, I do have 4. That's not quite 0. And then I have a half. Well, I have to think about what two numbers are going to come together to make 10. And I know the double is 5 plus 5. Well, 4 is just a little bit less. So I would put this crown between 0 and a half, a little bit closer to a half because it's almost there. Okay. All right, 1 ninth. So once again, my denominator is 9. That means to get from 0 to a whole, I have to go 9 spaces. So I think about it and I have 1. Okay, well, 1 is a pretty small little number. Now I'm going to think, though, is it going to be closer to a half? Well, 9 is a difficult half because it's an odd number, but I can think about 4 plus 4 is 8, so 4 and a half is about halfway between 9. Well, 1 is smaller than a half, than the 4 and a half. So it's going to be between zero and a half. Okay. Now I'm going to look at three sixths. Once again, the denominator is six. So to get from zero to a whole, I would have to go six spaces. And so I have zero. Well, three pieces, that's not very close to zero. And then I'm going to go to a half. And I'm going to think, all right, my denominator is 6, so 3 plus 3 is 6, so that would be equal to a half. Oh, I have 3 6. That means that 3 6 is equal to 1 half. Okay, the next one I'm going to do is 6 6. And I see that my numerator and my denominator are the exact same number, which means that the whole thing is colored in, which means that 6 6 is closest to a whole. And the last one we're going to do together is 15 twelfths. Well, I look at my denominator and I see that it's 12. And so my numerator is bigger than 12, which means that this one is actually greater than a whole. Hey, now you can try some of your own on the classwork that's next.